Fighting styles have been around as long as people themselves. Every group of people has needed some sort of self-defense in combat. Because of this, there have been many different fighting styles. It seems that every culture has implemented their own beliefs and practices into their particular fighting styles. Eastern and Western fighting styles are very different. Eastern styles tend to focus more on self-defense, while Western styles tend to be much more aggressive and offensive. In Eastern countries, the predominant fighting styles seem to be martial arts. A martial art is a system of practices and training traditions used for combat. These systems are usually, but not always, without the use of modern weapons such as guns. Martial arts are taught in the Confucian tradition of teacher-disciple apprenticeship. The training takes place in a strictly hierarchical system under the supervision of, and guidance of a master instructor, sometimes known as a guru or sensei. In traditional martial arts systems in the East, juniors are generally not tolerated when they question the training methods, instructor motives, or personality because they are not considered familiar enough with the requirements of their respective fighting system to make any realistic distinctions. The Confucian-based systems are set up in the style of a traditional family. Those students that enter instruction first are considered to be older brothers and sisters, while those who enter later are considered to be younger brothers and sisters. The peers of the instructor are considered to be aunts, uncles, and other family members from older generations. With such clearly defined relationships, the Confucian-based system implements a seniority system that is designed to help develop intangibles, such as good character, patience, and discipline. This is something that all pupils are taught before they are shown anything but the most basic training exercises. Testing and competition are a very important part of martial arts. They are used to determine an individual's specific skill level. Students of the martial arts undergo periodic testing to determine what level of martial arts they are at. These levels are recognized with a status symbol that the fighters wear, more, most often a belt. The belts usually range from white at the lowest level to black at the highest, although this can differ in some instances. Testing for these levels can be comprised of forms or sparring. Forms are usually a performance of predetermined routines that can be performed by one or more fighters, and although they sometimes resemble combat, they are inherently non-combative and cooperative. Forms are usually judged in open competition by a fit by a panel of master level judges from more than one martial arts background. Sparring can be separated into two forms, light to medium contact and full contact. Light and medium contact sparring competitions use a point based system that is also judged by master level judges that start and stop the match to award points and assess fouls. There are some rules about certain areas of the body, like the face and the groin, that cannot be contacted, and also some certain techniques that are disallowed in these competitions. Points can be awarded for the solid landing of a technique, and matches are over after a certain number of points are obtained or a set time limit is met. With the exception of forbidden techniques such as biting, eye gouging, and groin striking, you can use any technique and also any amount of force that you wish to defeat your opponent in full contact sparring. There is usually a lower emphasis on scoring points, and the goal of the competition is to either knock your opponent out or cause them to submit. Because many practitioners of martial arts feel that full contact sparring is only important in instances of hand-to-hand -hand combat, and they view their art as one of self-defense and for use in life and death situations, they prefer not to participate in such competitions. Two of the more well-known martial arts are Shaolin Kung Fu, or Shaolin Chan, as is properly called, and karate, which means empty hand. Shaolin Chan, as legend has it, began over 1,000 years ago, and possibly as early as the 5th century BC, when an Indian monk named Bodhidharma arrived in Shaolin Si, China, and started to teach Zen Buddhism. Also, he implemented a series of, of systemized exercises that were designed to strengthen the mind and body. These exercises allegedly marked the beginning of the Shaolin-style temple boxing, and later became the basis for the majority of Chinese martial arts. The origins of karate are somewhat obscure, and little is known about the art form until it appeared in Okinawa, a small island in the group of islands that now make up Japan. It was practiced there in secret, and gradually took on different forms. It was not until 1917 that the world would find out about karate, when it was publicly demonstrated in Japan by Gichin Funakoshi. 
Along with subsequent demonstrations, this art form impressed Crown Prince Hirihoto, who was very enthusiastic about the art. In 1922, Funakoshi was invited to demonstrate and teach karate at the famous Korokan Dojo by Dr. Jeno Kato, founder of the Japanese art of Judo. Without the backing of such a formidable martial arts master, karate would have been scorned by the Japanese. Today, however, there are many forms of karate that are practiced across the world. Western styles of fighting seem to be more focused on the offensive aspect of combat. Some of the notable Western styles are boxing and wrestling. Although these activities can be used as a means of training or exercise, they seem to be more about starting conflict than trying to resolve it peacefully. The teachings in these forms of fighting do not necessarily tell the students to go out and use the techniques they are taught in any situation they are faced with, but they also do not teach any practices for a peaceful resolution. This, coupled with the goals of these fighting styles, make them appear much more aggressive than the Eastern fighting styles. The goal in boxing is to knock your opponent out. If they stay on the ground for a predetermined amount of time, usually 10 seconds, the bout is over, and the standing man is declared the winner. If neither fighter is knocked out, the winner is the man with the most points after all the rounds have been completed. Points are assessed by a panel of judges based on the number of punches thrown, the number of punches landed, and the effect they've had. If a fighter does not throw punches, he is often docked points. In ancient Greece, people believed that fist fighting was one of the games played by the gods on Olympus. So in about 688 BC, boxing became an event in the Olympics. In ancient boxing matches, the participants often wore metal-filled leather hand coverings. Often this led to very bloody, duel-to-the-death battles. Boxing died out with the fall of Rome and wasn't revived as a sport until the 18th century in England. Early boxing matches in England more resembled a street fight than what we now know as boxing. Gloves were not used, and no techniques were outlawed. These matches usually took place inside a ring of spectators. The second heavyweight champion, Jack Broughton, brought with him a new set of rules that outlawed such practices as hitting below the belt and eye gouging. He also created a squared off area instead of a ring of spectators which soon became the preferred fighting area. In 1866, the Marquis of Queensbury lent his support to a new set of rules that were named in his honor. They outlawed gouging and wrestling and also made it mandatory for all participants to wear gloves. This helped shape the type of boxing that we see today. Because of its violent history and also its strong ties to gambling, boxing has had a tough time gaining acceptance from everyone. There have been periodic efforts to outlaw the sport, and some have been successful in certain ways. Boxing is no longer a sanctioned high school or college sport, although it is still available and legal to anybody who wants to pursue it. Wrestling first appeared in the Olympics in 708 BC. At that time, it was a much more violent sport that had closer ties to military training than what you would see in the Olympics today. It spread throughout the Roman world and into other countries that were around during that time period. During the Dark Ages, wrestling fell out of favor in the Olympics. However, in 1896, when the organizers of the Olympics were looking for sports with roots in the ancient Olympics, they added wrestling again. The goal of wrestling is to pin your opponent. This is done by using a combination of brute force and technique to hold their shoulder blades to the ground for a predetermined amount of time. Also, there are ways you can score points, and if there are no falls recorded in the set amount of time, the winner is the wrestler with the most points. Wrestling is not nearly as violent as boxing, but is a very aggressive sport, and is not often, if ever, taught as a version of self-defense. It is for this reason that it seems to be more violent than the Eastern martial arts. All of these fighting styles appear in both Eastern and Western cultures. Martial arts were created under the Eastern thought traditions of Buddhism and Confucianism, while boxing and wrestling were created by the Romans in a Western-type thought tradition. They are all more prevalent today in the areas that follow similar thought traditions to, which the, to those in which it, they were created. It seems that possibly the way in which thought traditions view violence is transferred into their fighting styles. There, are, there will always be a need for fighting styles, because no matter how one people's thought tradition views violence, there's no telling how their neighbor's thought tradition does.